and we move forward. So now we are going to talk about the rest of the gates we have in the, in the digital logic. Okay, so what type of gates we have? We, we already talked about three different gates, right? We talked about not gate. We talked about old gate. We talked about end gate. Right? And this is a simple equation. Everybody agree? Now we are going to talk to about how can we combine mix between of them to bring the other gates. So for instance, for instance, or gate, if it's followed by not gate, it give me something is called no, oh, sorry. It give me something is called no gate. So, or forward by not gate is give me what? Nor gate. So how the nor gate look like? So basically if I have X and Y here, so if F is a function of X of Y, that will be X or it was Y complement. That makes sense? Hello? And then if you want to convert that to an AND gate, it will be X. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. yes. Today we're going to be, today we're going to be talking about a lot of gates equivalent. <laughs> this is going to get today so confusing. Today is going to be the day of the gates, okay? <laughs> this is <laughs> so where we get white hairs. Have, have you ever watched a movie called Enemy of the Gates? You know, so this is the Enemy of the Gates. Anyway, so now we have, you know, X or it was Y complemented. Makes sense, right? Simple wise. It does look like that. It says or with a circle, right? If you would like to break it, you're gonna use De Morgan, right? So De Morgan say X complement, Y complement, and the or will turn to be what? And. Do you guys agree? Now we learn about nor gate. What about if and followed by not gate? It will be what? Nand gate. So and followed by not gate that will be equivalent to something else is called n is representing the not and then you know the name of the gate and so it's nand. So we have NAND gates. So OR, OR, and the knots make it N, so it's called NOR. AND, right? AND, full whip by knot. So that means you know AND here and the knot there, so they're going to call it NAND. Equation from the Boolean algebra perspective so F as a function of X of Y is equivalent to X. And it was Y, and the whole product will be complemented. If I want to distribute the complements using the De Morgan theorem, then that will end to be X complement, Y complement, and the end will turn to be OR. Everybody agrees me? Let's look at the true stable, right? Let's look at the true stable. And you know, that will show you that I don't need to remember how the two stable of NAND look like. I just need to remember N. So if I look to the table, I'm gonna make a big table like this. Input wise is X and Y. And since I have two input variables, so that means I'm talking about how many states to cover this table, four states, right? Because two power number of inputs. So one, two, three, four. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. You guys agree? Now, I'm going to make a new output here, and I call it, you know, and output, and here, NAND output, right? 
in and we said if both of them exist that mean there is exists existence of the output so that mean here is one other than that then you know none of them are exist as an output right but we said that nand is just an n followed by not gate do you guys agree so pretty much i can move every single state declaration output to be flipped right so zero it will be one zero it will be one zero it will be one one it will be zero so pretty much if i would like to contour it like this this one based in this combination is the two stable describing the nand gate that makes sense to everybody yeah yeah okay what about or so if I do the same thing, here is my table, x, y, one, two, three, four, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And of course we know this is the mean term, m0, m1, m2, m3. Do you guys agree? Those are the mean terms. Then if I make this column describing the function or, and this will be describing the function nor. So I know an or if any of them exist, there is an output exists, right? Other than that, nothing. So other than that, this is the only state and those are exist. That makes sense? So definition of nor is an or followed by not gate. So that means every single state will be flipped. So zero will turn to be one, one will be turned to be zero, one will be turned to be zero, one will be turned to be zero. So far, so good? Yeah, Professor, so does yeah. that mean that we can say that like the NAND is equal to the complement of AND or is that a stretch? <laughs> we, we, we will play with this later. Okay. You know, because later on, we, you know, there is something, there is nothing actually in reality called an AND and OR, <laughs> okay. even they are basic. Got it. You know, in reality, in life, there is something is called NAND. So if you buy your SSD, they will tell you NAND gate technology, SSD uh, hard drive. Oh, okay. Or, you know, no technology. So the only thing is exists is actually NAND and NOR. Hmm. Would you Got imagine? Hmm. So the only thing is exists is NAND and NOR. Interesting. But in the logic and theory, OR and AND are not gate. And I will tell you the story based on the transistors, but, you know, later on. Anyway. So, so far you understand what we discussed. What we discussed today, there is new set of gates based on the combination of the basic gates we learned from the Boolean algebra, based on the operators of AND and OR, right? AND followed by NOT, NAND gate. OR followed by NOT, it will be what? NOR gate. So far so good, right? Now, there is another function, it's called X, or x or see there is or an exclusive or it's called exclusive or so what is the exclusive means we're gonna learn so function wise this is the exclusive or so have you noticed this is an or and then you know you have this line here right that's an exclusive or. So if I would like to describe it, I would say function has X and Y as an input. It will that, you know, X, it will be exclusively or with Y. So this is a new what symbol we learn. We are learning exclusive or. This is exclusive or. Okay. So we have the symbol and we have the Boolean algebra, but the Boolean algebra, it didn't give me what is this. <laughs> so we have to break it into the fundamental logics that we have in hand. So how it look like, it's very straightforward. It's basically, you no, know, it's equivalent to, you have X and Y. So, you know, that mean you're gonna have two terms coming out. When I say two terms coming out, I'm talking about what? or between of them as we learn about mean term max term. So I have an or here and I have a term here and term here, T1, T2, 
Okay? Now, x here, y here. Okay? So it's gonna be what? It's gonna be x complement ended with y with x ended with y complement. This combination is equivalent to this symbol when you apply it in the x and y. So x complement ended with y or with x ended with y complement, that's actually can be replaced by what x or. So far so good? Yes, I, I think I need to make a, like a, like a, a sheet of paper with all this, <laughs> what, what it can derive from. <laughs> this is a... Just wait, don't worry. Everything is okay. Here. It's a piece okay. of paper. <laughs> all right. Don't panic, you know? It's, you know, this course is fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is a piece of cake, so, seriously. Anyway. Okay, all right. Now, let's see what is the effect of this function as exclusive. You know what is exclusive always doing? Is looking for the odd number of one per state. The odd number of one per state. If you don't, if you are afraid to remember the equation, there is a, just put it in your head like this, odd number of one per state is gonna give me x, uh, x or. What does it mean? It means if I have a table like this, x, y, one, two, three, four, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, M0, M1, M2, M3. Function x, y, which is the x or process, right? I'm looking per state and seeing where is the odd number of one. Zero, it doesn't have any one, right? So that means it's zero. The last one, 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 those are even number of one. So still zero. But you know, here, zero, one, it's actually what odd number one, just have one, right? So it's one, and there is one. If you use the mean term that we learned last time, that's why we learned mean term, I can write the equation out of this table. Do you agree? Let's write it. So pretty much f x y is the m1 or with m2. Do you agree? Which is mean, what is M1? Huh? Somebody, if you remember, it's gonna be what? X complement and it was Y or huh? X and it was Y complement. Did you see a piece of cake? That makes sense? So, Definition will help you. X or is a function looking for the odd number of ones. If you if you find number with one per state is odd, the output is one. If you find it even, the output is what? Zero. Okay. What about the last function? It's called x nor. That's really easy. It's nor the norm that we learn, right? and it's exclusive, right? So we have the other function here is called x nor, exclusive term of nor, which is basically x or inverted. <laughs> so if you learn one, you will get the second, right? So it's an f of x, y equivalent to x no x nor was y. X X Nord was Y, right? So this is the Boolean algebra description of it. What about the equation and you know the table and all these things? It's pretty much easy. Do you remember the X or flip it? So you know I am looking for the even number of one per state, not the odd one number of the state. So you can actually straightforward come in and say X Y one two three. Four zero one zero one zero zero one one M zero M one M two M three and here's a function of X of Y 
and for the X nor process, right? If I look to the table up of the X or, I flip it. I see zero, it's one. I see one, it's zero. I see one, it's zero. And I see zero, it is one. Let's see if it is correct or not. What is X nor? I'm looking for the even number of one per state. Here, zeros. That mean it's I consider to me there is one, but it's in, in a different dimension. So it's actually one. But then, you know, here one and one even, I put it one. Then, you know, there zero, zero, because this is actually odd number. Let's look at the equation. Equation is gonna be F X Y equivalent to M zero or with M three. Do you agree? In that case, it's equivalent to X complement, Y complement, this guy, or with X, Y. So I can officially tell you that we are done. We have all the gates we can ever talk about in our life. What was, or what was and the not. For this, professor? Yes. yes. What was the symbol for this one? Circle dot. Oh, I mean the like the gate symbol, like if we were drawing a gate diagram. Oh, here. Thank you. So it's an X or forward by not by not. Okay. Now, if we understand what is going on, that's really straightforward. What I did today is nothing. Basically, no, I just told you or forward by not gate, and you can figure it out and follow it by not gate and you figure it out. Then you know XOR and you are looking for the uh, odd number, XNOR you are looking for the even number of ones. So far, it should be straightforward. Now, the game will start. With what? Basically, I told you guys, we are just having in our life in terms of implementation, two gates, NOR gate and NAND gate. And I need to know why there is no OR gate and gate and XOR and XNOR and all these things, right? Because we are actually gates mean transistors. So you guys later on, you will learn something is called CMOS transistor. CMOS transistor. Complementary metal oxide silicon. This is actually a course you can learn if you would like. It's called VLSI. They're gonna tell you how to build the stuff from the transistor perspective. That's a 4,000 level course, okay? Whatever we are learning now is called gate levels and we are learning digital logic. So you will build up, after that you will take uh, microcontrollers, which is a kind of programming plus, you know, plus uh, understanding of the logic. Then you will go up a little bit. You will take 3300, which is very long. You will take another level, which is a 4304 VHDL. You will take another level and gonna be 4305, which is uh, using all of knowledge you learn from digital logic to build processors and communicate with processors. And, so, and we're gonna take 4300, which is a computer architecture, understand how to make a architecture more efficient than the other. So what we are learning now is the basic is the most important thing. If we have the base in our hand, it's gonna be a piece of cake for us. So <clears throat> what is CMOS? Basically, you know, there is a story of something called electron. You guys know electrons. So what is the current from your point of view? Consider it as the following. You are in the highway and there is every single car nearby the other one, you know, back to back. And you know, the one in front, when it move, the one behind it will move. So what happens in this little wire in front of you, the electrons will go from a side to the other as a row. So the, defin the definition of the current is what is a bunch of electrons going in a row from a source to destination. Do you agree? What happened? People who when they built on this, so they said, you know, why we don't make it like a water canal or like dams? So, you know, we have gate 
to a checkpoint to allow the electrons whether they're gonna go from this side to this side or not. And they call this transistor. So you already have here a canal, and you know you guys are moving from here to there. This is a just a street channel, right? But you know, if you do here a checkpoint, that will be exactly as a transistor. And they said, oh, but you know, the physicists came and say there is something is called positive and there's something else is called what? Negative. The negative is carried by what? Electrons and the positive carried by what? Something called holes. So that's why they build a transistor and they call it N mass. That means the movement carrier is basically holes and they build another transistor and they call it P mass, and that's actually holding, this is holding holes and this is holding electrons. This one, it has a circle like this. Then they came, what about if we put them together to build the CMOS? So they came into this, which is basically one positive, one negative, and they connected together like that. Here is the ground. Here is the VCC voltage, here is the gate, and here is the output. And they studied that characteristic. They found this circuit is exactly acting like what? Not gate. So if you put here input, it will be flipped here as an output. Then they came and say, okay, but we need to build something even more, right? which is basically serialized, deserialized transistor. So they came into, okay, if I, if I do something in the N, it has to be flipped in the P, right? So if I go ahead and do like this, that means I parallel the P, it has to be serialized in the N. So they make it like that. And this is A, this is B, and here is the output. Guess what is this? This is two input, what, NAND gate. So if you like to build an N gate out of this, what you're gonna do? You will take the output here and you connect it there, the output will come here, right? So how many transistors you will need? One, two, three, four, five, six, to make end gate. While that you know nor gate, how many transistors look? Uh, end gate, one, two, three, four. So did you now figure out why actually NAND gate is important? If you flip this one and you make it parallel in the bottom and you know serial in the up, it's gonna be nor gate. So that's why you know every single thing is nor and, and, and NAND gates. Every single implementation rail on the circuit is a NAND and nor. NAND. Hello. Why is this important for us as a 2300? Because, you know, we figure out that, you know, we have to convert every single gate to what? To an end or So now the question, is it possible to build gates using other gates? Make sense? So for instance, if I go to you in the exam and say, hey guys, build to me, two input OR gate using two input NAND gates. How many NAND gates you're gonna use? Let's see, right? So I have an OR gate. This is my target. Target. And Professor Ali just give us in our hand NAND gates, gates, whatever, how many? right? And it's telling us move from here to there. What should I do? Pretty much it's not really hard. I have to think about the truth table. Do you guys agree? So this one as an OR gate, it means X OR with Y like this. You guys agree? While in an end, it's an X, Y like that. It's an and followed by the negation, right? So if I distributed, 
it will turn to be X complement, Y complement. If I start looking, I will find this similar to this, except, except what? Here is X, but here is X complement, right? So if I do it like this, if from the beginning, I invert the X, it will be like that, right? Which end of the day will be like what? Equivalent to this. Did you see the strategy? Okay. Now, but we need not gate, but we don't have not gate. Professor Ali said, you know, use NAND gates, right? So we have to play with NAND gates. How? If I look to the NAND gates, X, Y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And here is my F. I don't remember what is NAND gate. I remember N, right? So my N, it was zeros and one. So flip it, it's gonna be one, 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 zero. You guys agree? Now, if I look, I have two, two inputs, but what about if I shortage them? Is this table still exist? Nope. This table is no longer have all the states. This table will just have this and this. Right? How? If the input zero, so that means the first wire will be zero, second wire is zero. If the input one, that means the first wire is one and one. So pretty much zero is zero and one one. Right? Then if this zero, that means this the output is one. If this one, that means this is a state, and the output in this case will be zero. So yes. I build NOT gate. So if I want a NOT gate with an NAND gate, that will be the symbol wise. So I shortage the input, right? So now out of learning this part, out of learning this trick, out of learning the part of the NOT gate, I can come confidently say that, you know, if I make a NOT gate, X, X complement, if I make a NOT gate, Y, Y complement, then I will go in an end gate that will be X complement, complement, Y complement, complement, which is equivalent to X or Y. So I use three NAND gate to build an OR gate. Any question? Can you explain the shorting again? Which one? The shorting. Um, what you do right next to this one? This one? Yes. Okay, look. You know, you, you brought two, two, two wires and you connect them to one wire. What does it mean? Whatever carry in, a, in that wire will go into these two wires, right? So it means, look, and let me make a different cut. Look, this one is equivalent to this one, right? You agree? Yes. Okay, what does it mean? It means if I put here zero, what does it mean? It means this guy will be zero and this guy will be zero, right? Do you agree? Where is this in this table, this one? Right? But this table said, when I have zero, the output is one. Cool, it looked like what? Not gate. But I need to double check also if the one will be there. So if I have one here, let's make a different color. So the one is here. So that means one will be here, one will be here. Oh, so I'm talking about this state. So one is here, one, one. So I'm talking about the output in this case is zero. This is the same behavior of not gate. Do you agree? If you have an input zero, the output is one. If you have an input one, the output will be zero. Make sense? Correct. So that's why now we are using this NAND gate as what? As a NOT gate, right? Which is helping us to do the scenario of the X two wise complement, Y complement, right? Do you agree? If it's clear, tell me. If it's not clear, tell me. 
Thank you. You are most welcome. Okay. Other people, do you have any questions? If it's clear, write clear in the chat. If it's not, write no or say, and you know, I'm more than happy to repeat. Okay. Now, what about end gate? So my target is end, and you know, whatever I have in my hand is NAND. So here is my end, and in my hand, NAND, mini NAND, whatever you can consider. So that means I should write the relation, right? Relation x, y, it's x, y, right? This is the end. You guys agree, right? While, while this x and y, it's x, y complement, right? So if I want this to be equivalent to this, I have to add extra not gate here to make it x, y. Make sense? And we know that, you know, I already built a NAND gate and not gate from the NAND gate. So pretty much I can just come and say like this, x, y, it's gonna be x, y complement. And then, you know, NAND to be x, y complement complement, which is basically x, y. This is the uh, equivalent of the using NAND gate for building an AND gate. So far so good? Any question regarding this part? If it's clear, write clear. If it's crystal clear, you know, write okay, crystal clear. <laughs> it's fine. Yay. <laughs> Just one person said it's crystal clear. <laughs> oh, multiple people say crystal clear. Oh my gosh. It's still the crystal. You know, we have a lot of crystal now. Oh, some diamond. Oh my gosh, we are rich. Okay, anyway, <laughs> anyway now. We are moving into the rest of our thing. What about, you know, building, uh, <laughs> what about building NOR gates using NAND gates? <laughs> Everything is po possible in this life, right? Oh, you know, somebody said blurry. What's up, Alejandro? Tell me what's the problem. Okay. <laughs> He was missing, you know, he would like to steal the crystal, you know. Anyway, okay, go back. So anyway, now we have NOR gate and I want to build it using NAND gate. What should I do? Same philosophy, right? So it's gonna be here X, Y, and here is X, Y complement, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I want to look to the NAND gate again. So it's gonna be here X, Y, so it's gonna be X, Y complement. But this one, it doesn't look at all to this one. So what should I do? I have to break the distribution to be X complement or Y complement, right? So there is a lot of work we have to do here, right? <laughs> do you guys agree? Which is basically, this one, it was our OR equivalency. Do you guys remember? which is basically, you know, NAND to X to be X complement, NAND to Y to be Y complement, NAND did to be uh, X or Y, right? Then I follow it with the, another NAND to be X or Y complement. So this is the equivalency of the NOR gate using NAND gate. Later on, we're gonna appreciate what we are doing here. If you notice, I don't have even a piece of paper to look at it. I'm just writing. It's, that's the why they call it digital logic, you know, logic. So everything is logic, you know. If it's logic, you know, that means logically. So it will be easy, busy, lemon squeezy. What about our two lovely gates? They call them or uh, X or X NOR. Right? X or and X nor. Those we need to look at them and then you know we will move to the nor gate and the same thing. Right? So 
let's look at the XOR. So XOR, it was looking to the, huh, it was looking to what XOR? It was looking for the odd ones per state, which is translated in the, uh, in the mean terms to M1 or with M2, right? So if you guys remember, X or it was for us M1 or with M2. And M1, that means, you know, zero one, and here is one zero, right? And if it's an X, Y, so that means I'm talking about X complement Y or with uh, X, Y complement, right? Now, I know from the previous derivation I made here in front of you, what is X, what is Y, what is a naught, what is this thing? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start altering every single one, right? So let's look, I need X to be complemented. So X is gonna be complemented. And then I need X and Y to be ended, right? So and for me is an end followed by an end, right? So gonna be here an end followed by an end. And here is my Y. Make sense? Now I need to do the reverse from here. So gonna be Y complemented. And it's gonna be also ended, that means two ends. Right? Now, those two guys, this term one and term two, here term one, term two, they have to be or together, right? So oring them, it's very also straightforward. So let's use a different color. So gonna be here, not gate, not gate, followed by NEN, right? That was our OR equivalent. And this is AND equivalent. And this is AND equivalent. Is this that set? No, we need to do something to decrease number, to minimize number of gates. So our, our deal as a digital engineer is to decrease, to minimize the resources on the chip, because you know that will cost me more power to use. More power to use, that means the battery lifetime will be affected. That means, you know, every single five minutes, I have to take off my watch and I put it in a, in a charger and then I, you know, wear it back and off. That means in terms of feasibility, useless. I trash it, right? So I will show you something now I'm gonna do and I will hope that everybody will agree with me. If you complement anything complement, what does it mean? Huh. If you complement the complement, it means that you didn't do anything, <laughs> right? You guys agree? Which is the same thing here. I complement the complement. And I complement the complement. So pretty much I can remove these two guys and I put wires, right? So I can take this into the account and say that I will have here a not gate and same thing here and let me just get out the front color done. And then you know I take this. And then I take this into like this. So pretty much I would like to introduce to you what the X X or X or equivalency. How many NAND gates did we use? One, two, three, four, five. So five NAND gates two inputs, because you know, every one, it's a single two inputs, right? Used for building two input XOR gates. Okay, sounds good. 
I'm gonna use this specific example to tell you something is called critical path. Here is the thing that I, you know, I, I was, you know, I should wait a little bit, but you know, I would like to share it with you. And then, you know, later on, we can make more example out of it, okay? I have a question to you. If I ask you a question, the amount of time it takes for you to reply back with the answer, no matter if it's correct or not, it's considered that your response time, right? This circuit, bunch of transistor. So that means, you know, when I put input, I, I, I actually expect that, you know, it takes some time to the circuit to the processing until the output will be coming out. Do you guys agree? How this happened? Basically, every single, every single gate, it has a response time. So, you know, every single gate has its own response time. So for instance, if I have a NAND gate, then you know I consider that T NAND will be taken so the output will come out from inputs going in. That makes sense? If I have an OR, So T or time is coming as a response time, right? And same thing for T and, and same thing for the T not, and same thing for the X or and X nor and so on. Do you guys agree? Now, what is the trade-off? What is the details coming out of this? How I'm gonna calculate it? For instance, that I have a bunch of gates. How I'm gonna come and say that this X or based on the NAND gates, it takes this amount of time. So if you go in a race, right? If you go on running in a race, right? Like in marathon, right? The winner is the fastest, right? You guys agree? For us in the circuit, the slowest is the fastest. <laughs> Sorry, the slowest actually is the winner. Again, imagine the following. Imagine that, you know, I have in my head multiple thread and every single thread is calculating to me a certain amount of data. But then, you know, I have to give Professor Ali one answer. So what does it mean? I have to collect all of these data together, combine them and give him the answer. I cannot tell him, you know, oh, five, you know, no, no, seven, oh, yo, maybe eight, oh, you know, maybe, oh, it's nine, you know? When you say, oh, and then, you know, you will move out to the other one altering, basically what you're doing, you're just showing out responses without making conclusion before you will give me the response, right? So that's actually showing you the circuit, it has to be acting with the slowest path. So how many passes I have here? So for instance, you know, the pass is the, is the line between the input and output, right? So there is one possible pass to the output here. While there is another possible pass to the output here, while another possible pass to the output there, while the last one possible pass to the output there, right? There are paths. I'm looking for the longest path, which we call it critical path. So in circuit, we are looking for what we, oh, sorry. We are looking for the longest Path, which is called critical path. Okay, so let's apply the wording that we have in this statement in our current situation, right? So I have here NAND gates. Do you guys agree? So I have here T NAND. T NAND. T NAND. T and T and right. So let's count. In this pass, I have one, two, three. So there is pass one. It has three T and pass two. It has two and pass three. It has one, two, two also, 
student. Class four, it has one, two, three. That's renan. So officially, I can tell you this circuit, which is acting as an XOR using NAND gate, it has to be running in how many NAND? Three T NAND. This is the slowest, right? To give me the right answer. And what right answer? To give me the truth table of the X no XOR gate, which is basically M1 and M2 will be one and the rest will be zero. Any questions so far regarding this part? Does it make any sense to you guys? Could you repeat why the M1 and M2 have to be equal to zero? Sorry, what, what did you say at the end of this? What happened? At the end of it, you were saying that M1, M1 and, M2 and M2 would be equal one. M1 and M2. Min term one and min, min term two. XOR, do you remember the XOR? Look, mm, 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 mm. look, 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 look. Here. look, M1. M2, right? One, mm -hmm. one, right? Anyway, does it make any sense to everybody? So for our, um, so for our, our gate using the NANDs, it is only as fast in its response time as the longest amount of time it takes for one. It's not just for NAND. This is just a concept I added in the middle while I'm working in the gates equivalency. So in the gate equivalency, I'm moving with NAND on or, right? But you know, I decided to go in this one because this one, it has more branches. So it's very easy to give you an idea. If you build a circuit, you have to actually take the longest one to be the official time of the whole entire circuit. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. It's called what? It's called critical path. I'm looking for the critical path. Okay, so now we learn today the or followed by not gate is nor. NAND followed by not gate is NAND. Uh, and followed by not gate is NAND. And then we learn X or we learn X nor. X or I'm looking for every single state to the odd number of ones while in the XNOR, I'm looking for the even number of ones per state. We wrote the sample, we wrote the equation as a Boolean algebra, and we made the truth table out of it. Then we came to the idea that, you know, NAND can be working as a NOT gate. If you shortage the uh, input and you start thinking about the truth table and you will find that, you know, the table will be shrinking from four state to two states, which is a zero, zero and one, one. Then we start using the NAND gate to build other gates like XOR gate and OR gate and gate and NOR gate. What still we need to build XNOR gate, right? So why we don't make it as a homework? You guys will work on making the XNOR gate. Same way I did in front of you. Okay, so what is your homework? You're gonna you do the same way that, look the way that I did it, same way. A copy of this will be actually shared with you, right? And you have it under the week four sub, uh, supporting materials. You know, I, I call the PDF as a note and then I put the date, okay? You will look at this. I want you to do the XNOR gate using NAND gate. Now, I need to see how can I do the same thing with NOR gate? So I'm gonna do a few of them and you guys will be doing the rest. It's a same concept, okay? I just want you to practice, that's the whole idea. Make sense? So for the NOR gate, my NOR gate, it means OR gate full with by NOT gate. You guys agree? So I need to see whether that I will be able to build NOT gate out of NOR gate, do you guys agree? So in the physical part, I have to trim and connect shortage to input like that, right? And then, you know, I will look to my table. It used to be two inputs, so it's gonna be X, Y, and then one, two, three, four. 
zero one zero one zero zero one one, and here is F as a nor. All right. Now I need to see which states gonna stay when I shrink to two uh, two wires to one wire. Basically, it's gonna be two power one. So that means two states, right? And in this case, two states, it will be this state and the state exactly as we did last time, right? Now, or it means that one of them exists, everything exists, right? So that means it's gonna be zero and bunch of one, but I'm actually negating it. So it's gonna be one and zeros, right? Make sense to everybody? Now I'm looking. Yes, somebody wants to say something. Go ahead. No, isn't the last one supposed to be one, two? Why? I mean, is the... One second. Or it give me zero, one, 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 right? I'm oh. negating it. So yeah. zero will be one, zero, zero, zero. Right? Yes. Okay. Anyway, so now if this zero, that means I'm talking about this guy. If this one, I'm talking about this guy, right? So if it's zero, it's giving me one. If it's one, it's giving me zero. Yes. So this NOR gate also, when I truncate it and make it one input, it will act as a NOT gate. That makes sense? So pretty much I can come and say that, you know, NOT gate can be built using a shorted input uh, NOR gate. Well, you could do with NOR gate and NAND gate, right? Yes, NOR and NAND. I mean, we can we can play with any type of uh, gates later on, but. Oh, but but with a uh, NAND gate, if you short it, it would become a uh, NOT gate as well, right? Yes, we did that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the first one we did. Yes, yes, yes. That's basically what okay, I'm okay. Okay. Oh, okay. gotcha. Now, let's start looking of building again the gates using the NOR gate, right? Sounds good? So let's start with a simplified one, AND and OR, and then you will move forward, right? So an AND. So I'm targeting you to get AND using bunch of NOR gate. You guys agree? So, and again is x and did y. Y in nor is x y complement. Right? Do you guys agree? So, this thing it can it, it you know doesn't look like at all like this, right? So we have to distribute the complement. Distributing the complement, it means that it's going to be x complement, y complement, and n. Yes, this one kind of look like that, except we have to flip those guys. Right? So pretty much, I can build the end using an nor. And here I will have nor and x and nor and y f x y it will be x complement complement y complement complement which is basically x y so this one is equal to this one so three nor gates will be enough using this uh, uh, hierarchy implementation to do the same job of what and gate make sense what about if I would like to build an OR gate from that NOR gate? So I have an OR gate as a target. So this is my target, OR gate. While, you know, I have in my hand, oh, sorry. I have in my hand and many of this NOR gate. Like in, like in, you are in the lab in 2300 and you have those, but you cannot finish the, the lab because you don't have the right, uh, ICs. So what you're going to do, you're going to start with a plate and put some pieces so you can finish the task. The same thing, you know? So you're going to be X, Y. So OR is basically like this, right? While the NOR is actually like that. 
that's actually easy, right? So pretty much, you know, if I have a nor x, y, and then, you know, I short it to get nor, so going to be what x, y complement, right? And that's R2. So I have, a, I have an evil question. My evil question with using Nanda nor, give me an or, what are you going to do? <laughs> If I have NAND in my hand and one NOR in my hand and I want you to give me OR, what should you do? Would you just replace that shorted NOR with a NAND? Shorted exactly. NAND? exactly. Right? Make sense? Everybody following me in this part? Oh, so you replace that with a, a shorted NAND gate? Yes. Got it. Okay. Anyway, now. What about if I want to build NAND using NOR? Let's look how it's gonna happen. So I have here NAND and this NAND X, Y, and basically it's gonna be X, Y complement like this, but my NOR is like that. How uh, I'm gonna do it. Plus sign, right? Yes. So we're going to be here. Right? So X complement, Y complement. Here we're going to be what? <clears throat> and then, you know, we will just go ahead and Make sense? Sounds good? So, homework. Do you, uh, today is Wednesday, right? So gonna be due Monday. Monday will be what? 22nd, right? One second, I'm just checking something. So we are in 17, so Monday will be what? 20 second, right? 20 second. Building X nor using NAND gates, calculate the response time using the critical path concept, okay? Now, build x or gate and x nor gates using nor gates with calculating their critical paths. Sounds good? You're allowed for assuming any time. You can just write it like me, T, nor, and say how many units of T, nor, whatever, okay? Last part, I need to mention, Professor, can you just explain quickly what it mean by shorted again when you draw it in short? Yes, yeah, sure. So look, you know, if you have something like this, here is, an, here is not gate, right? Look, if I short like this, what does it mean? Let's say this is wire number one, wire number two. It means that you know the new wire, which is uh, three, 
is equivalent one and two. Do you agree, Alham? Hello? So that means, you know, one equals three and uh, two equals three. That means, you know, one equal two equals three. So if three holding zero, that mean you know one holding zero and two holding zero. If three is holding one, that mean that mean you know one is holding one and two is holding one. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, so that's your homework. The last part I need to talk about, and we'll close for today. So don't forget the homework, okay? How are we gonna deliver the homework? Keep it with you. You will come to me on Monday and you will tell me, professor, we fixed it, or oh, we have a problem. Okay, we have a problem, then we start from the problem. But it doesn't mean that, oh, we have a problem and everything, you know? You know, we have to be very specific, okay? Now, let's have fun a little bit on you. If somebody's telling you, look, I have two input, and gates, a pile of two input and gates in my pocket. And I want to build eight inputs and gate. Okay, so what should I do? So let's see, one of the way I can do it, I can come and say that, you know, he is one end. It's gonna be I zero with I one, then another end. Here we're gonna be I2 there. There is another N. Here is I3 there. There is another N. Here is I4 there. There is another N. I5 there. And you move forward, right? Then, you know, that will do that job, right? It will just give me I0 to I7. Do you guys agree? Hello? Yes. Yes. Yes, but this is not efficient. This is not efficient. Somebody tell me why it's not efficient. No power is used. No, because the longest pass here would be long. <laughs> right? It's not too many gates. It's about the, 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 the pass. Look. So the pass between I0 and the output is going to be, oh my gosh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times the time response of the gate. So one of the way to do it is basically to do what? Here is an end, I0, I1. Here is an end, I1, uh, I2, I3. Here is an end, I4, I5. Here is an end, I6, I7, right? And then, you know, I take this two guys together, and I take this two guys together, and I take this guys together. So if I look at it, I will find that the longest pass here will be what? which is one, two, three. I just use three gates as a longest pass. While there, I have eight. So this circuit will do performing eight input and this will also perform eight input and, but this will be responding to me faster than this one. Make sense? Hello? Yes. Yes. Now I can tell you officially, we finished chapter two. Do you guys have any questions? Yay. Can you scroll? You're going to have a copy of this. Go on. I scroll down. What? Professor, I have a question about the critical path. Sure. Just like kind of overall calculation. Sure. So I, kind of, I get the gist of it. Like essentially, you're just setting it up so that you have as low amount of inputs as possible for each um, individual input, um, okay. like as many like travels, I guess it's called. Mm -hmm. um, but is there like a mathematical representation kind of like big O notation that is related to how many gates a certain input is like? Like, cause I know no, like no, big no, O no. Is nothing yeah, like that. Yeah, I understand your point. You know, the problem, you know, this is logic is not math. So the mathematics, when it will be joining the logic, you're gonna work on something called e, oh, sorry, 
EDA, EDA tools. And that's actually using something that's called genetic algos. It's a lot of, a lot of, they call it blood box. There is a lot of numerical solution going in and gonna be a big mess because you know, you are, they are putting all the possible way that you know, you're gonna combine uh, a component together to get the final. Right, output. like all the possible optimized techniques yes, for yes, that yes, given yes. significant. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. okay, got it. But you know, at least, you know, you are now learning the manual way until you will move to the higher level. We're using tools like Vivado tools, Quartus tool, Synopsis tools, Cadence tools, which is, have been made by Syn Synopsis, Cadence, Zynex, Altera, Intel, you know, micro semi, you know, microchip, you know, lattice semiconductors and all of the semiconductors players, IBM, US Air Force. So that's basically the magic of the trade is being able to create an optimized technique. To exactly, those. exactly. Okay. And there is actually a branch of research about this. Right. Okay, yes. cool. Thank you, Professor. You are most welcome. So if you guys don't have any questions, uh, I would like to thank you for the time and effort for attending this course. I hope that you guys are enjoying the course and, you know, don't hesitate to ask any question anytime. I would be more than happy to uh, assist you. So God bless you. Stay safe and, you know, keep in touch. And a copy of this presentation, uh, which is a recorded video of this lecture, will be uh, located in the week four folder under the learning unit under the recorded lectures uh, subfolder. While the subfolder supporting materials will have a PDF of this, whatever we know I drove by my hand today. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Stay professor. Thank you professor. Thank you, thank you, Professor. God bless you. Thank you. Professor? Yes. Could you scroll up a little bit, like really at the beginning of the up, like really at the beginning? I don't know. I don't know why I didn't ask, but oh, professor, what did you mean by TN? Like when you were talking about a response, like time. what is T? T is time. Oh, okay. You were saying like the, the it's gonna take a longer time if it takes like if if we take the like the longer route for the output. Huh? I mean when you're talking about T, right? You said T, you know, this it... guy, you know, this guy as a block, right? It has input and can output, right? Output mm. will come after some time, right? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the time. Oh the, okay. Response time. Um, the response okay yes and how did you um and why did the the diagram above that why did the the nine uh become a wire why did you combine the two like how did they cancel each other if it makes oh uh, you mean here you mean here yes okay i have a question for you hmm. did you see this oh yes okay what does it mean it just becomes X because that exactly. If you have a not gate, not gate of X, this is equivalent to this, right? Mm. So that means it's X, right? It's basically X, yes. Okay. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Can I ask the last question? Sure. Uh, there was one of the uh, a diagram above again where you did like a single input or like what did you call it? Short short circuit of X X plus Y. Okay. And you said it gave you X plus Y. I, I, like, I couldn't see it like logically in my head. Which one? It's this up. One? I don't know if it's up or down. This one? Yeah, it was kind of the same thing, yes. So, but the input was okay, X. I, I, have, I have a question for you. Mm. He was in a, a knob gate, right? Yes. Yeah, right. This is actually have two inputs, right? What? How many states is uh, two inputs will cover? Four. Four. Yeah. Right. So going to be x, y, zero, zero. Do you agree? Mm. Okay. Now we know I do it like this, right? So this two wires turn to be one wire, right? Yeah. So where exactly in this table those guys are now? This wire can hold either one or zero, right? Yes. So if it's zero, that means you know he knows zero and zero, right? Mm. Here. If it's one, that means it's gonna be one and one, right? 
Mm. Those are can you can you do this? Can you can you can you figure a way to do this with this configuration? No. Exactly. Okay. So oh that's why you call it x plus y. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.